All right, our next step here will be, okay, we've got a virtual device, it works, but now I want to set up my real device. That's why I have one. So again, my, my normal, my day-to-day my -day device is a, is a Windows phone, but I have a, uh, this Android device to, uh, for development. And now Android devices span the gamut from you know, high-end to, to low-end, everything in between. Probably the device that you get will work, but I would recommend that you get one that it's at least Android 4 and up. Now, how do you know which version of Android you have? Let's take a look at that. Let's figure out what version of Android our device has. And again, this is going to vary depending on people's devices. So let's do this. Let's go to the home screen. You've got your home button. Go to the home screen. And then depending on your device, um, I'm going to I'm going to click my settings button which on my device I I can show it up here too. Uh, you're going to have some button that is your menu or your settings which in mine is three little lines. On yours it might be like a half sheet of paper. I'm going to tap that and it pops up with a bunch of options. Here it pops up with wallpaper, manage apps, system settings. Mine comes up with edit home screen, home screen settings, system settings. Okay, I do see a system settings from my home screen. I'm going to tap that. If you don't see it from there, I'll give you another bit of advice in a moment. But system settings. And then in your system settings, you're going to scroll down, usually at the very bottom, from whatever screen you see here, at the very bottom, you're going to see something that says About Phone. So click System Settings, and then probably at the very bottom, About Phone. about phone. So on my real device here, at a certain point on about phone, I also have to click on um, software information. Whereas on this one, it told me right away when I went into the about phone, Android 4.4.2. <coughs> on mine, I had to go one more level deep because mine says network, phone identity, blah, 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 software information. That's where I went, software information. And mine says Android 4.1.2. All right, so how many of you found your Android version? Tell me what you have. Four point four. 4.4. All right, so a big variety. Two, for, uh, does anyone have a two point whatever? Okay. Anyone have a three point something? Anyone have four point something? Most of us. Okay. See that demographic? Most of us have a four point X device, the, the newest branch. I don't think I saw anyone with a three point X. That was for a short time, for more for tablets, like the first Android tablets running 3.0. And then a few have the, the 2.x branch. Does anyone have an Android 1.x? <laughs> Let's put it in a museum. <laughs> so um, if you've got at least 2.2, you should be able to do what we're going to talk about in this class. If you've got 2.1, 2.0, 1.7, you probably will not be able to do what we want to do in this class. All right, so on this screen here, also for some of you, you will need to do a trick here. Uh, because when these ship, these are set up as a, as a consumer device. For regular people, that maybe you're going to make phone calls, do text, download apps, maybe connect it to your computer and transfer your music. What we want to do is set this up as a developer device so that we can install apps we can install apps without going to an official app store. And on my instructions on, on sheet number four, I have the, the trick. But since we're here, I'll talk about it. For some devices, you don't have a screen that lets you turn on developer devices until you kind of confirm you're a developer, which you do on this screen here. We've got something that says build number. Do you, does everyone see a build number? Um, the trick is that you want to tap that seven times. So I'm, so I'm going to start tapping that. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven. As you're typing, as you're tapping it seven times, it might pop up to tell you one more tap to your developer. <laughs> and you tap it seven times. Okay, good. So some of you don't need this, and some of you need this. So we did it together just so that we've all on the same page. All right, so if we did this, now what we'll do is I'm going to go back one screen. Maybe, yeah, I'm going to go back one screen. And do you see a screen that says developer options? All right, if you don't see it, there might be another path to go through. I'll talk to you in a moment. But for a lot of you, if you go back to this system settings, you see developer options. For some of you, you have to first go into your apps, and then you'll see developer options. It's weird. I'll help you out in a moment. But for everyone, it, we, we all seem to be here, perhaps. You're going to see system uh, developer options. So I'm going to click developer options. And then here we're going to turn on two things. One of them is right here, USB debugging. Mine is off. Yours is probably off because you've got a consumer device. You don't want, you don't need this. But now we do need it because we're going to work as developers. So turn on USB debugging. Get this scary warning that says USB debugging is intended for development purposes only. Use it to copy data between your computer and your device. Install apps on your device without notification and read log data. We're not jailbreaking it. Again, we're not jailbreaking our device. We're not unlocking it. We're not doing any of that stuff. All we're doing is activating it so that I can plug in my USB cable and I'll install my app from my computer to my device without going through the, through the App Store, Google Play. So, however, this is a, a serious warning because notice it says this will allow apps to be installed on your device without notification. And conceivably, you could browse a website on your mobile device while you have this mode turned on, and there might be like, okay, get a free antivirus update. And you tap that, and it installs actually a virus instead of the antivirus. So what we've done here is we've kind of opened the, we've unlocked the door, we've opened the, the gate. And obviously for this class we need to do this. So let's click OK. But I'm going to remind us, if this is your main device that you live on, this is where you make your phone calls and your contacts and everything are on, I'm going to remind us at the end of the day, let's turn this off when we go home. Because we don't want to be so open when we're out in the real world. Here we want to turn on USB debugging because we need to. We're not going to be able to install our app any other way. But you're going to be a little unsafe, so I'm going to remind you before we leave to turn it back on. So I turned on USB debugging. And then I also recommend you turn on the option somewhere here about stay awake. Stay awake. Leave stay awake. That means it won't go into your lock screen. Um, and you say, well, that's going to run my battery out. Well, yeah, but we're going to plug in the cable in a moment. So also what's useful about that is that the screen won't, won't go to lock, and that means that when you install the app onto the device, it'll be ready to use instead of unlocking it. So that's optional, but I recommend turn on Stay Awake. We're not going to lose power because we're going to be plugged in. But at the end of the day, we'll come back to the screen and turn both of those off to go back to normal. All right, so... Then let me take a moment to help people. Did everyone turn on their developer options? Anyone need help? Did you not find it on the same screen that mine was? <coughs> Let's take a look over here. Probably yours is under your apps screen or something. I know it's there. Oh, no, probably. Just for. Well, that's just not. Well, I guess I don't actually remember. Because you have to. I don't want to have someone else. 
Okay, so we've got our devices set for developer mode. Now here's I'm gonna I'm gonna try this slightly different than I usually teach it, um, but um, let's see if it works because sometimes it works this way and sometimes not. But let's do this. Uh, let's go uh, go ahead and open a web browser. And I've got an address. So on sheet number four, step number two, sub step number two, um, I've got a web address there. Let me pull it up here. Let's go to this web address. This obviously matters if you've got a real device. So let's go to the address here, developer.android.com slash tools slash extras slash OEM dash USB dot HTML. You would have been able to get to this screen by first going to developerandroid.com into the developer portal and then poking around in there somewhere eventually, you'll get to this screen. It's on my sheet here, so you can just click it on my sheet or type it. Let's go to that screen. Of course, make sure you typed it right. It's extras, plural, and then that should go here. The point of what we're doing here is this is where you should go if, um, if things don't work right away. Because there's so many uh, manufacturers that can make a, an Android device. Any manufacturer can make an Android device. And then put Android OS onto it and put their own icons and all of that and, and sell it. Um, the version that we're seeing in the emulator is the stock Android skin. It's like straight from Google. It's the basic one. 
but every manufacturer changes theirs a bit. So here on this screen, it talks about the OEM USB drivers, the original equipment manufacturer drivers, the drivers from the company that makes your device. Mine is an LG. So down over here, uh, at, a, at a spot over here, it's going to give me the link to go to my LG drivers. Don't go there yet, but I'm going to give you an overview here. There's a, it's a technical document, but it talks about what to do if you're on Windows 7, XP, or Vista. I assume Windows 8 is just about the same as Windows 7, but they'll add those links eventually. Windows XP, etc. And then there's a big list at the bottom about here's where you should go to get your particular drivers. Unfortunately, they don't update this as often as they should because nine months ago when I was teaching the same class, I could go to the uh, I could go to the Motorola link and it would take me directly to the drivers. But then Motorola released the Moto G and the Moto X, and so it broke all of their links apparently, and that now goes to the main home of Motorola. So sometimes this link will take you exactly where you want, and it seems more and more it doesn't take you where you want. So here's where we're going to probably spend a little bit of time to get people's devices to work, and what we need to do here is get the driver, install the driver, and then plug in the device. Don't plug in the device yet. So there's two big steps here. Set the device for developer mode, which we did. Step two, download and install the software. We're going to download and install the software on these computers. We're not installing that software to the phone. We're doing it to the computer. So that means whatever file we download at this point, you want to save that to your flash drive and bring it next time because you'll need to install it again next time. So again, when you come back next time, you're going to need to create a virtual device, install the install the Eclipse plugin, and install your your device driver. But we'll do it again next time. So here's where you could go to your particular device. But I've been finding that perhaps it's a lot easier to do the instruction listed on top here, so I'm going to give this a try. And if that doesn't work, then we have to do it individual devices. If you go back to the top, under the Windows 7 screen, it says, perhaps try the driver that comes with Eclipse, and then we'll see if it works. So I'm going to try that actually live right now. I, I have not downloaded the the driver from LG yet. But I'm going to plug this in. So plug in your device. And you'll probably get a little pop-up down here, installing device software. It's helpful for you to plug it in and then click on that icon so that you get more feedback. So mine popped up to say, USB composite device ready to use, LG 730 ready to use, LG 730 no driver found. Okay, so I expect that. How many of you got all green check marks? Okay, pretty lucky there. How many of you got at least one red X? Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. As per the instructions that I have that we have open right here, we're going to see if the built-in Google Driver works for my device. I have not tested this yet. I'm going to close this. What this is saying is that inside of my SDK folder, I have an Extras folder, which if you installed Haxam, you remember that. In the SDK folder, there's the Extras folder, and then an Intel folder, and that's where Haxam is. Well, what's also in the Extras folder is a Google folder with a USB driver that might work for your device. That's what I'm going to try right now. What the instructions are saying is that on my Windows desktop, I should have my computer screen there, and I will right-click it to go to the desktop and right-click your computer. And then select Manage. All 
right click manage On the left side, I have Device Manager. So this screen is going to tell me everything about my computer. Here under the Device Manager, it tells me everything plugged in or installed onto my computer. So what pops up for me are three big yellow warnings right here. It doesn't understand what this device is, my LG 730. So I'm going to select the LG 730. I'm going to select this LG 730. Yours might say something like unknown Android device or maybe like ADB or, or something. Again, I'll help you individually in a moment, but I'm going to do my demo. So here's my device. It doesn't recognize it. I'm going to right-click it. Update driver software. And I get two options. Search automatically, which didn't work a moment ago. I'm going to browse my computer. The Eclipse that I downloaded comes with a driver that might work. Question? If it has your model, the model working, uh -huh. <coughs> Do you see any any yellow warnings? Then I think you'll be okay. So stay at that point, and, and then on the next screen, we'll see if it's working. But if any of you don't see the yellow warning, yours is probably working. We can fully tell on the next step. Uh, mine's got yellow, so I'm going to go to this screen and select Browse My Computer. I'm going to try the driver. So Browse, and as per these instructions that we have here, Browse my computer, uh, click Browse, and locate the USB driver folder, which is inside the SDK folder. So under Browse here, I'm going to select Browse. Here's the ADT bundle folder, which is on the C drive. Open that. There's the SDK folder it's telling me about. I'm going to open that. There's the Extras folder. There's the Google folder. USB driver. I'm going to select USB driver at the top right here because if I leave include subfolders it will automatically search for me. Is it in this folder or is it in that folder? So I'm going to select the USB driver folder. OK. So I'm looking in the folder that the instructions told me to look. Include subfolders. Next. Unable to install. Okay. Did anyone of anyone get a, a good result here? Sometimes when people do this with a tablet, <laughs> it works perfectly. It didn't work with mine, but I've got a plan B. So I wanted to give that a shot. My plan B is that I need to search for my particular device, most likely on the do a quick Google search and then I'll get the proper driver. So at this point I'm going to un I'm going to unplug my device cuz that that tactic didn't work. And so, so I'm going to do a Google search. It's not worth trying any of those manufacturer links. Try. Just skip that step. No, try it. It might work, but here this might be a better result cuz that hasn't been updated. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a Google search. LG 730 uh, OEM USB driver. And notice the keyword here is OEM. Because we could have the consumer version of the driver, which is the one that like lets you download music to your device. I don't want that. I want the OEM USB driver. That's the one that is more uh, for developers. So this is where we're going to all diverge and you can call me over, but I'm going to see on mine, that one's it. LG730 support driver. In my case, I know that one is it because I've done it before. But on yours, you want to go to your manufacturer's website and look for the OEM USB driver. Right 
here's software updates and drivers and that's my driver so I'm gonna download that it's 10 megabytes I'm gonna click it to install it it's gonna install on this computer I'm gonna take that file with me because when I come back next time I'll have to do it again it's downloading and then you're going to, it's going to install the driver yes but you're going to do that with your phone unplugged. yes but when we were doing the manage you had your phone plug yeah in. yeah that's what the instructions were saying they were saying plug it in and it won't recognize it and we'll try to do manage and then it might recognize oh, it didn't so now we have to go this way where we're going to download the i'm going to download my manufacturer's driver then plug it in so it kind of redoes the initialization initialization process. All right, so you try then on your own. I'm gonna minimize that. Try this on your own. Find your driver. Call me over if you need some help. I'm gonna I'm gonna get this running and then I'll help you out. Anyone need any help at this point? No hands, so no problem. Okay, I'll be there. Well. So I clicked it to run it. I'll be with you guys one moment. I'm clicking it to run it, and then it's just going to say install, and yeah, all the defaults next. It's going to put the right driver in the right place. Not optimal for this class. Not for this class, no. Alright, so it, it it installed. Now I'll plug it in. Alright, so I needed these drivers that were not that didn't come with Eclipse the SDK so it did that and then also to confirm I can go to back to my manage screen here maybe refresh it right there and then um, I won't worry about that and then uh, up here ADB Android I forget what it stands for but Android Sooner single ADB interface portable device there's my portable device 16 gigs LG Android so at at this point, I've pretty much confirmed that it works, and then I'm and then I'm going to talk about installing our Hello World app onto the device, and then we'll go on. But let me answer a few people's questions. So once you do it once or twice, then it, then it'll make sense, and then you can will be able to do it. But it's going to be this sort of a stumbling block first about doing this driver thing, and then it'll all work. But that's why these first two classes, especially this is foundational stuff, this is a lot to set up. But you'll have to have the one that is specific to your device. Because it says, it tells the computer how to talk to your device. It will be whatever driver is appropriate for your device. So it may need to be same way because if you're going to use, if you're going to get this phone, then you're going to get the drive for this. You'll install it here every week or every month, and then so it doesn't matter what computer you want to connect as long as it's a Windows computer. <laughs> Changes are going to be 
So on this page, it's just a hypothetical page, so as we were shrinking, uh, so some of the things are different with the machine, which, and then sometimes they get they rearranged like several lines. This is supposed to be uh, centered on there. And if I get too small, then it's supposed to change to a drop down menu. But I didn't, uh, that feature didn't work for me last night. It was a little, a little quick and towards the end. Yeah. Of the day. But it does, just, I mean, the very yeah. fact that you're going from a free box format to this is pretty darn cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You do run into it on the website a lot. Um, One where somebody had a, a sky background and some mountains and some, some trees, and as you made it as close to them, the trees slid over in front of the mountain. Oh, yeah. But you can imagine that kind of stuff. I'm sure the S5 has its pages. Probably small, but not too flexible. Because the screen files have people screening as such that might be. It would be nice if you could then if you could, you know, make a switch and then uh, you know have a couple of different layouts based on that. And it's more just a four buttons. Yeah, I'd say the phones are, 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 are,
can, and you can probably use it on the same aspect ratios of the phones and you can see a large variety of that. There will be some of the people that are a little more. The variation is probably much tighter than the computers. Plus, the power And these screens tend to be wider on average than the typical computer screens. So they have that resolution on this one. Yeah, that we used to it. That used to give me a big long list of the uh, first, yeah, of the best options. It'll certainly become an issue when I you know, plug in the uh, thing for a VGA cable because uh, the projectors. Combination of newer hardware, but also a much newer version of the operating system. Yes. I only have the snow level, which was 10.6.8. And uh, this is 10.5.5. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of little things that you can do.
Well, now you can talk about now you can talk about uh, when the previous session. great thing about Android is that it's open source and anyone can work with it. The bad thing about it is that it's open source and anyone can use it. <laughs> can work with it. So that's the thing that uh, I saw, but I saw a lot of commonalities. If you had an LG device, it looks like you need the LG United driver suite thing. If you are a Samsung user, you, you have their Samsung suite of things. So um, an HTC had its own thing. So everyone's got their own set of uh, drivers. And luckily, I've only had to deal with, so far today, name brand devices. I come in with people that have these weird off-brand names, like Pantech and Kobe and all of them. And uh, it doesn't quite work. And that's why, at, if you notice on my instructions, after all of this, after going through all of this, and I have different things about try this, try this, try that, and at the very end, I have, well, if nothing works, your device might not be compatible with developer tools. And then the final instruction that I have for that, if, you, if all else fails, my final instruction. Ask for a refund. Class refund. <laughs> <laughs> Ask for a class refund. Um, so. It might work, it might not, but, um, okay, so what we've got here is my uh, managed screen seems to tell me that my device is working. Mine says ADB interface. A lot of you up here do say ADB interface, and some of you then have something under the portable device, and it says the name of your device, and some of you don't. That's okay, probably. On this next screen here, finally, then we'll see if it's really working, which is I want to run my Hello World app on my device. That's the whole point of all of this, so I can put an app on my device. So obviously, we spent all of this time today, again, doing foundational stuff, and when we come back, we'll, we'll actually do more, more hands-on. But here's what I want to do. Okay, finally, let's say I spent all of this time to see if it worked. I'm going to go back to Eclipse. 
back to Eclipse, and what I want to do is run my October 9th, my Hello World app, on my device. At the moment, our run profile, run configuration, only has one that will run it on my virtual device. This is the case why I would want to go back to run configurations. I go to run configurations to create or delete or modify a configuration. I need to create one because I've got one that will run on my AVD. So back, go back to the triangle up here under run and select run configurations. We've got one listed so we're going to create another one. Double click Android app here. It says what do you want to call it? I'm going to call this run on the name of your device. Mine is an LG 730. You don't have to put your real name here. You can, this doesn't have to be anything meaningful. It can be run kitty cat, and that'll work. <laughs> but um, I recommend you put the name of your device, run on LG 730. So now on the menu, we'll have a brand new menu item that says run on AVD, run on LG, or whatever yours is. We've got one device, so we'll select browse or one project, so we'll select Browse October 9th. So I have the name of a new configuration. I'm not changing the existing one. I made a new one. Change the name of the, of, the na of the configuration, give it the project name, switch to target, and this is what I said. Don't worry if your device does not appear in this list. It will not, even though it's fully set up. It appears on, a, on the next screen. As always, we'll select Always prompt to pick device. Click apply. Click run. And then on this screen is where I expect to see my real device. LG 730. This is the screen where you should see your real device. How many of you see your real device listed there? How many of you don't and you thought it would work? Okay, help you guys out in a moment. But notice here, the virtual device has this icon. It's, it's a little device in the computer, and we have it named ABD. And this name you cannot change. It's the name that the device is giving the computer. But it's got a little phone there. So there's mine. And it says a little bit of info here. ABD name, not applicable because it's not. Target this, and it reminds me you've got Android 4.1.2, and it can, and it's compatible with my app. Remember our app we targeted from Android 2.2 to 4.4. Uh, it's online, doesn't have a debug state. Don't worry. So I'm going to select my virtual device, uh, my real device. Select my real device and say same use same device. So it doesn't keep asking me for this. I know that I'm going to use my real device here, so don't keep asking me. I'll click OK. I'm going to keep an eye out down here on the console and see what kind of feedback is happening here. I'm going to keep one eye on there and one eye here on my device. And there you go. Hello world. Fred, can you confirm right here? Hello world. October 9th. There you go. So at least mine worked. Raise your hand if yours worked. How many of you say hello world on your device? OK, everyone, look around. If you didn't, if the people that don't have your hands raised, well, either you have a problem and we'll fix it, or you don't have a device. And that's why we have virtual devices. So very cool. So there we go. Now you can go home. Uh, press the home button. You can go home here. And then <laughs> select apps. And then browse around here, however yours is. Some go vertically, some go horizontal. I'm going to go a couple spaces over, alphabetical, element OP. OK, mine puts it on the end. It adds apps to my last screen. Some of yours gets integrated alphabetically. Anyway, I go to my last screen, and there it is. October 9th, the little generic Android icon. It's an app on my device. Question. Yeah. It is actually uploading it. Well, it's compiling it and then uploading it and then installing it and then running it. 
And now what we have up on this handy button here is my two run configurations, my two launch configurations. So I can easily switch between, okay, I've, I've made my updates, show it on my virtual device. I've made my updates, show it on my real device. They're both here. What's also cool is that this is a shortcut because once you've got many run configurations, if you simply click the green button now, it will run the last configuration, which in my case was the one at the top, the real device. So use the triangle to switch back and forth between devices. Or just click the green one and it'll tell you it'll be the last one. Run, run on LG 730. And so remember, any changes we make to our app don't automatically get changed added to the device. So we'll make a change here. We'll run it just to get into this practice. Uh, it currently again says hello world. Now you remind me, maybe without looking at the instructions, remind me, how do we change it to say something else besides hello world? So inside of the res folder, inside of the values folder, inside of strings, we have this. Let's edit this in the code view to get practice with that, because sometimes we'll need to edit code. How do we switch from the pretty interface to the code view? The tab at the bottom. The tab inside the tab. So switch to strings XML. It doesn't say code view. I wish it did, but the strings XML dot file. And then, uh, oops, how do we turn line numbers on again? There's a gray bar here on the left side. Right click it. Show line numbers. So now, what line number do I need to edit to change the name of Hello World? Five. Five. Remember, you have to change what's inside of the string tags. That's why but not the name in the string, because this is sort of like the name of a variable. Sort of, think about it like this. VAR hello world equals hello world. So sort of think about line 5 as like this, if you remember the previous class. So we're not changing the name of the variable, we're changing what's in the variable. <laughs> which is right there, hello world. Victor. We're changing what's within the tags. So Eclipse reminds you a couple of ways you have not saved. One is here, this is telling you some sort of difference has happened. And also the little asterisk at the top of the tab. So we want to save. Remember to save, and then I'm going to run this on both my devices. I'm going to select run on the LG and run on the AVD. And actually, it loaded up faster on my AVD than on my real device. There it is. There. Yeah, it's all already in the system. But uh, there we go. So it says Hello Victor right here and on my uh, virtual device as well. So that's going to be our workflow. We make changes, we save it, we run it, whatever device we want. <coughs> Keyboard, uh, the shortcut is if you click the last, the, if you click here, it'll run the last configuration. Question? Is there a way by looking at your phone to tell? Um, when the app was last updated, or if, is there a way to tell, does your phone have the same version of the app that you're looking at in Eclipse? Or do you just have to run it again to make sure you have the latest version? I would be safe by running it again because of the version, there, there is a version number, but it doesn't increment unless we do it. And there might be a log somewhere we can tap into that does tell us when it was last installed or something. But I would just be safer just to run it again. But if, if, you, if you 
you give an app, or if you put an app, let's say you have multiple folks or multiple people using your app, there's not a way by looking at the app to tell when they got it or how whether they're running the, the latest version that you. That might also depend on your device because I'm I'm in looking at my device under the app info and it doesn't tell me anything about installation date. So perhaps yours might give you an installation date, or maybe somewhere else in the system there is that. All right, everyone, so we're not quite done with the lecture yet. Let's quiet down just a little bit before we finish here. Yes? Okay, uh, I'll look at that in just a moment. Uh, so I just want to see, because it's always gratifying to see, uh, raise your hands again, how many of you did this work? All right, so like 10 of you or so, good. Um, and how many of you um, don't have an Android device? Okay, so remember, you'll just be using your, your, your virtual device. So we're going to wrap up the lecture soon. We did spend a lot of time on this foundational stuff, but coming back on um, Tuesday, we're definitely going to... Uh, to be very hands-on now that we've all got all of this foundational stuff done. But the thing is that um, this these are one of the things that you're going to need to do uh, when we come back next time. You're going to need to um, create your virtual device if you need it, but I recommend to create a virtual device even if you've got a real one. Uh, set up Eclipse with the plug-in, and uh, if you've got a real device, install that driver. If you found the right driver today, download it and save it to your USB. You don't want to waste time looking for it and downloading it again. Just save it to your USB. Again, our test one project here is not important, so you don't have to take it with you. Uh, so I'm just going to exit Eclipse for the moment. It'll confirm, do you want to exit? Just click OK. And then we'll, um, I'll remind us about setting our device back to normal. Remember that. Question. Yeah, um, so we just go to the download and, and save the download and then reinstall. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, let me show that exactly. Uh, where did this download to? Probably my downloads folder or desktop somewhere. Yes, wherever your file downloaded to, whatever the name of your file, you, here's mine right there, the LG United Mobile Driver whatever yours was, that's what you want to save to your USB. And that's what you can in use at home, probably. And when you come back, that's what you're going to use to reinstall your driver. Any other general questions? Yes? That one is the web, the web editor, web page editor. That's on my sheet number three, the very first chunk of info here, which is the the web page editor. Yeah. Okay. Any other general questions? All right. Let's let me remind you. If this is your main device, you probably want to turn it back to a normal consumer device. So we'll go backwards. We're going to go back to our device and turn off USB debugging. So I'm going to go back to my device. I'm going to go back to the settings, the menu, system settings. And some of you had right away a developer options menu, and some of you had to go to your applications first. So you might go to applications and then developer options, or some of you have it called just developer or development. And then when you're there, turn off. USB debugging. And if you want, turn off Stay Awake. So then now you're safer. You can go home and, uh, and have uh, your device locked down like it was before. Because a moment ago, we had it that technically, if you go to the wrong website, it would make, and if you downloaded this, the software, it would not prompt you to, would you like to install this? Because we turned that off. And so put it back to normal. I suppose you can also turn off developer options, but I, I wouldn't because we turned off the important one here. Okay. If, if in class, if we left that USB debugging off, every time we 
launch a configuration, we would just get an extra message that says, are you sure you want to install something? Is that what would happen? No, it would prevent you even from trying to install onto the, the device. Probably it won't even show up on that on that screen with Eclipse where it lets you choose your device. Because you just don't have an active to be able to accept that. So it's not that it would pop up to confirm, because it's nothing ever popped up to confirm here. It's just to let the device be used for debugging. Oh, okay. All right, so I'm probably, for this video, I probably am going to go in and cut out all of that silence. 